Las Vegas, New York. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thomas Turgeon and Jared Wakefield with you to begin period two. Jared, a solid performance by both teams to start, but one of the big things that you noticed in the end of the first period, block shots for the Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh with seven block shots and at least four of those coming at the end of the first period. The less shots you're gonna have your goalie see, it's obviously gonna be the better. Schiller in the other crease this time, Oswego shooting from right to left. So it's gonna be interesting to see how Schiller will be able to handle things here in this matchup. But if his defense keeps doing what they're doing so far and eating up those shots and being a sponge, I don't think they'll have much of a problem. Oswego on the power play to start this second period on the penalty by Jacob Modry late in the first for a cross check. So Oswego will go back to the power play and they looked rather good going in the end that first period. And here's the thing, Thomas, at the start of the year, this Oswego State power play, one of the worst in the SUNYAC, around 10 to 13% for most of the year in the past month, since they went on the road and beat Morrisville, six to nothing, they have teed off. They have moved up to about 20%. That's good enough for third in the SUNYAC. However, Plattsburgh has them one up in that department, their penalty kill, 88.8% .8 coming into today. It is the best in the SUNYAC, and you can see why. They block shots, they are not afraid to put their bodies on the line of the Cardinals really wanting to stop this power play in the first period. Face off won by the Lakers. It was Connor Sleeth, and now it's Alex DiCarlo who drops it off for Quinn Warmuth as the Let's Go Lakers chant resumes to begin period two. Shot coming on by DiCarlo. That one goes high and wide. Sleeth looks to drop one in. He will, but Mitchell Hale will be the first one high. Looking to clear, but kept in by Colabufo. Sleeth drops it across Warmuth. Let's one go deflected wide by the stick of Hale in the corner. DiCarlo looks to drop one off for Warmuth, but instead Cal Shell will play it as he'll send it all the way around to the near side for Connor Sleeth with 28 seconds remaining here in this second period, in this second period man advantage for Oswego State. DiCarlo down low for Sleeth. He gets contested by Jerusik and bumped off. The shot deflected and goes off the skate of Young, but it's carried back across by Jerusik, a three on two. Luke Jerusik looks to dish by Warmuth, but Warmuth just sends it to the near side corner. Good second effort by Warm up there to stick that to the corner. Right back off the stick of Cal Shell up to Danny Colabufo, and Plattsburgh will return to full strength as Oswego will dump it in. A couple of changes for the Lakers. This is Weaver Vitale dumping it in. Looks like Ryan Bunka will be on first for the Lakers. Vance Stockdale there for the Cardinals. Shane Bull flipped up to Tyler Flack. Ryan Hogg trying to knock it down. Shea Bull looking to burn by Hogg, and there will be a penalty on the play. It will be going to Shane Bull, and it will be a slash. With a minute 28 in the second period, Oswego getting into penalty trouble again. But on the other hand, you look like that might have been a little bit of a soft grip on the stick by Hogg right there. Yeah, I think in that situation, Bull just kind of needed to let go of his stick. To me, it looked like more of a hook than anything because the slash wasn't that bad. It looked like the Plattsburgh player dropped the stick, but Bull gets his stick in there and kind of hauls him down a bit. So two minutes there, but they'll go with the slash is the reason for the penalty. And the Oswego State penalty kill, which has hovered around 80% all year, now about 81%. They've been a little bit better. We'll get a little bit more work. They get a lot more work right now as it's their third penalty kill of the game. A shot coming on. That one got deflected and never reached the goal. Shell McQuaid looks to clear. Stockdale across to the opposing side for Ring. Jack Ring down low for Callanan. Callanan back up for Ring. He keeps it in. Ring pausing with it. As Warmuth is on him. Back for Callanan. Up top for Ring. Looking across for Modry who aims and fires. Deflection by Stockdale. Looks to feed one out in front. But Shell was able to corral that. And a little bit of shoving out in front of the goaltender, freshman Netmeyer, Cal Shell. Mitchell Hill right in the beginning of it. And we saw him get a little, stir a little bit of a ruckus last year against Plattsburgh with Oswego State. So it's not a shock. He's right in front of goal just a year later. Nice heads up play by Bennett Stockdale. He misses the tip, but that tip comes off a little soft off the stick wide, able to backhand it. And that puck almost got through Cal Shell. He slams the pad shut, traps that puck and covers up nicely Shell, good awareness. Noah Bull on the draw, Mitchell Hale jumps on the face off, so Noah Bull will win it clean. And Ryan Bunka gets taken to the corner as he's pinned to the wall by Callanan. Stockdale and Hale there, Hale there as well, as Noah Bull battles for it, he'll pick it up. Bull slides over for Sleeth, Sleeth looking for the saucer pass to Bull, here comes Noah Bull coming in, big save by Scheller! A miraculous save by Eli Scheller to keep it 
a one nothing game. Modry almost kicked that into his own net too, but got regardless so um, if you can hear me that's great if not then uh, stand by Luke keep going all right um, well either way I can keep talking I, I feel bad for whoever's listening also whoever's phone is set on voice activity can you turn it off it, it's really really annoying um, I think it's I think it's Sacconi's, based off what I'm seeing going off right now. Um, but yeah, so either way, if you can hear me, great. If not, oh well. Um, but yeah, uh, this 3:10 on the clock. It looks like they're really jumping the gun. Cool.
State Lakers right here on WTOP 10. I'm Luke Rosenthal, joined by Thomas Turgeon, my color commentator for the evening. Thomas, kind of a windy day here, but senior day nonetheless. Vibes are great here at Laker Turf. It's a great day for some lacrosse, some senior day lacrosse in the final home game for the Oswego State Lakers, able to honor a few seniors, just to say the least, seven of them graduating this year, including a surprise one being Gavin Elston, graduating a year ahead of schedule, according to the Athletics website, listed as a junior going into this season, now honored today on Senior Day, as well as many others, Aiden Kenyon, Evan Coleman, Jack Delaney, Cameron Yost, and then as well as you have a couple like Brendan Hames and Tyler Scordo. So you have many seniors to honor today. A big game on the line for the Lakers for the final game. No doubt big game indeed. As we take a look at the Suniac standings here. Thomas, these two squads right here, Geneseo and Oswego, tied atop the Suniac standings. They're both undefeated in the Suniac at 4-0. and oh. They're number, slotted in as the number one and two seeds right now. So everything on the line, everything with playoff implications, on the line for both of these teams here. What are you expecting out of this matchup? I'm expecting a very, very interesting affair. And Oswego, on the other hand, you got to be a little bit cautious. Only 81 goals for, for the team going into this game. Granted, five less games compared to Geneseo, but Geneseo, 191 goals for for them. So they've been able to put the ball in the back of the net. Let's see how much offense matters for this Geneseo team. A tough test going into the top team in the conference today. No doubt a tough test if you look at some of the past matchups between these two teams. And Geneseo has had Oswego's number in the last four. They've won four straight. And overall, Gen uh, Geneseo leading this, the series 24 to 22. So Thomas, before we get into action here, you got any players to watch for? Yeah, I do. I'm going to have to go with Gavin Elston for sure for the Lakers, number seven. He seems like he's been one of the guys to put the ball in the back of the net for the Lakers. Senior day in a big game for Oswego State. He's definitely going to have to be someone to watch out for for the Lakers. On the other hand, I'm going to go with Christian Marcello Jr., 17 goals, or excuse me, 29 goals, 17 assists, and leads the team in points with 46 and a 326 shot percentage. He likes to get off a lot off the off his stick. No doubt about that as we are underway here at Laker Turf. 60 minutes of lacrosse action right here on WTOP 10. Geneseo won the face off. That was BB Syrup over Logan Prescott. Both face off specialists doing really, really well this season. Gonna go at it all day. It's William McComsky. He takes a shot. And Aiden Kenyon, the senior on senior day, with a nice save to start off the game. A rather routine save. A good defensive stop for Oswego State. Good start for their defensive end, who's really struggled as of late. But on the other hand, the offense struggled in that game against Alfred being shut out in that first half, a struggling offense against the Saxons last Wednesday. So they're going to have a good test today. Oswego's going to have a, not a good start here as Tyler Stevenson will go off the turf with a flag coming out. Flags are flying from two refs here, so maybe we've got two different angles. It's actually, I see two players going to the bench. I don't know if just one of them is going to the box. It will be just one of them, like you said. That will be Tyler Stevenson, possibly for a slash here, but Geneseo getting the early advantage going one man up. And they'll look to score early on here. A minute into the game now. It's Marcello Jr. We're going to pass it around town here looking for an open man. Give it over to Atkinson. Atkinson passes. They're going to look for a shot here. It gets broken up. That's Tyler Scordo, the senior. As he spins around. Jogs past two defenders. Passes out. And Oswego will look to clear upfield. A good clear there by Scordo. Getting sandwiched by two knights down that far right corner. But being able to get a pass out and cover up that passing lane that Geneseo was looking for to the right side of Kenyon. Just a 30-second penalty for us we go. So we are back to even strength here among both teams. So Oswego looks to take some charge now. It's O'Connor, one of the leading scorers for this Oswego team. Passes it over to Elston. Oswego will look to get going here. Donglewick with the ball now. He's going to take his charge. Donglewick charges right. 
Pass off, makes its way to O'Connor, over to Elston. Elston dodges, spins around. He's going to look for a shot here. It's going to go wide. Just whistles wide on that right side. The Geneseo netminder really didn't have to do much there. Elston did all the work, but Mark Pav really just had to stand there and let it go whistling by. As Oswego retains possession here, we'll have 11 seconds left on the clock for them to shoot. They're going to have to get something going here. Seven seconds left. It's Broadman taking charge. He's going to have to shoot here. He's going to take a shot. And it's going to be a nice save there. Mark Pav, the senior goalie for Geneseo. As we have sort of a stalemate here through only three minutes into the first quarter. Geneseo takes it up midfield. We're going to have an offsides penalty on Geneseo and a quick turnover there by the Lakers. So we have a whistle stoppage. They're going to give it back to Oswego. Might have started the possession too early. That's a little bit of a break for Oswego. Corey O'Connor now going to pass over to Sexton. Sexton to Delaney now. He starts behind X. He's going to go left. Sexton, he's going to take a shot, follow-away shot. He's going to go over the goal there. And possession is going to stick with Geneseo. That's a great play by Mark Pav, the goalie, to get out there. Mark Pav is going to find the newly introduced Robert Boniello. To give it over to Bukomsky. Bukomsky dumps it off. Another dump off there. Couldn't quite get a shot off. It's Atkinson who spins around. Gives it behind X and it makes its way over to Bone Yellow. Bonilla with the spin move. Another spin move. He's going to dump it right off there. A shot. And Aiden Kenyon scoops it right up into his stick for his second save of the ball game. Another good save there by Kenyon. You talk about Boniello looking to get something by Connor Aspinall. Reading it the entire way, although probably doing a 360 and then a little bit more just for good measure. Genesio, though, they seem a little complacent, allowing to take as much time as they really need here in this first quarter so far. Their offensive possession, they haven't been really hungry, per se, going after these grade A opportunities. They're really taking the time to look for that grade A passing lane to open up for any opportunity that they can get on Kenyon. Yeah, easily. What, these are two of the best teams in the studio. Actually, you want to take your best opportunity, best shots, and best looks. As Geneseo looks to get on the board here. They're going to get charged, and it's going to be a great stick check. That was Connor Aspinall, the midfielder. Got it out of his hands. Jackson Cummings goes upfield now. He's going to take a shot. It's going to go right off the stick of Pav. And Geneseo now with a fast break. They have an, an open Atkinson. He's going to take a shot, fall over. Just stay with Geneseo here. Brady Sullivan, the senior attackman, with the inbound. Hensolder is going to take it upfield now. The Knights rotate a little bit. They're going to clear out of the way for number one, the sophomore. They're going to look to pass it off here. Makes its way over. Hel Heliger. Marcelo Jr. with the ball now. He's going to dodge. He's going to go left. Dumps it off, and that's not going to be a great pass. Too low for the intended man. The crowd wants a flag there. Cross is a little bit of a rough sport, so not everything could be flagged. There's got to be some uh, intensity in there somewhere. A little bit of a poor pass there by Marcelo Jr. Looking for Atkinson here on this near side and just goes right underneath his stick. Corey O'Connor able to pick it up, draw the foul on Oswego, being able to turn the other way. Eight minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock as Oswego will look to be the first team on the board here with this possession. It's going to be Sexton. Sexton spins around, swim dodge. He's going to pass off. Makes its way over to Elston. 
Nelson now takes charge. He's gonna slip. Turf Monster got him a little bit there. He's still gonna get around his man. He's gonna take a shot. It's gonna be wide. Not too many shots on goal as we're about midway through the first quarter now. 8.15 left on the clock. Corey O'Connor now trying to make his way. Gets shed it off. Good play by Kevin Ellie. As we go now, they'll look to drive in there. Donglewick passes it off. Jack Delaney here. He's going to go lefty. Spin around. He's going to slip up a little bit. Looks for a cutter. He's going to look for a shot. And that comes a little bit short. The bounce shot. This is a stalemate midway through the first year, Thomas. Overall, though, so far, so good. Your commentator's curse, hopefully not so far, as Genesio averaging over 13 goals per game and Oswego averaging closer to 10. But right now, this is right where Oswego wants to be. I mean, although fly coming up here for the Lakers, a tough test to handle you got like you said you have the top team in the Suniac so far and you're playing them rather tight you've been getting some good opportunities getting some good releases on your shots they just haven't been able to really find the net of Pav and he's made a few good stops along the way but on the other hand they haven't really gotten many on net for sure yeah not many on net as Evan Coleman goes out for a slash he made a really good play because Geneseo had an open man behind goal he got a stick on it but then it was just a little too rough on the action afterwards Geneseo now is Robert Bonillo. As we wait for the whistle here, he's going to start off. Geneseo is going to work it around, look for an open shot. Makes its way to Marcelo Jr. Marcelo is going to pass off. Geneseo back and forth now. They're going to find an open man in the middle. Let's shot see. on goal. And Aiden Kenyon there with the heads up save. Stevenson, an absolute dog, being able to get through Geneseo's four-man attack and prowl his way through, but overall drawing a turnover, not good now. Doesn't put him in great position. Made a great play, but got yard sailed there. Geneseo in good position to score. So they're going to find an open cutter. Marcelo Jr., he's going to pass off. And another great save. Aiden Kenyon on one today. Great play by the senior there. It's going to be a little bit of a bump. Maybe from behind. Stevenson no call there. Just getting ragdolled around. Geneseo not able to get the ground ball. Did have a good opportunity to score there, but couldn't quite make it come to fruition. Going to be Cole Bolin who's going off the field now, making a sub. Geneseo looking to get all their men on field. Robert Benilo with the ball. Passes it to Mikonski. going to give it over to Spencer Frank. Mikomsky drives in now. Goes right, pass back. Got shut off. They find an open cutter. Not enough there. Great defense by this Oswego team. Thomas, this is one of the best defensive teams in the Suniac. They're letting up the least amount of goals in the Suniac, and that explains why they are undefeated so far in conference play. And it clearly shows, and on the other hand, Aiden Kenyon has looked spectacular to start off today's game. Didn't do too well in Alfred, but overall today so far, making a few big saves up top. They tried to solve him down below on the previous opportunity, going just between his legs, looking for that five-hole shot. Another good answer by Kenyon, but on the other hand, this defense has been holding down grit and teeth on this Genesio offense. It's been unbelievable so far as the shot goes on and a great save by Pav there. It's a battle of the goalies with five minutes on the clock here at Laker Turf Stadium. Lou Grosenthal alongside Thomas Turgeon. Saswigo looks to take charge. 50 seconds left on the shot clock. So we have a stoppage of play here. So they reset the shot clock to a minute. 60 seconds here for the Lakers. It's Gavin Elston. Excuse me, Liam Sexton gives it over to Corey O'Connor. Corey O'Connor gets a touch in the box. As he looks to make his way. Goes left, spins right. Shut off there by Geneseo. Gives it over to Elston. Elston over to McClary now. Back out to Elston. Gets a screen set for him and dumps it right off. Corey O'Connor 
one of the leading scorers for us as we go. Couldn't quite get that one to go. Pav with not a great pass. And it's going to be a turnover here for the Lakers. They'll look to start quick. Corey O'Connor now over to Delaney. Delaney just to reset it at X. Makes its way to Broadman and over to Elston. Elston being celebrated on Senior Day. Can he get a goal right here? He's going to drive in. Couldn't quite get it to go off. Looks for an open man there. And Geneseo charging up field now. That's Reese Gerlach. Try to scoop it right in there. Croquet into the goal. Aiden Kenyon. A brick wall in between the pipes there. Didn't let anything go. Good scramble opportunity there for Geneseo. And Luke, like you said, another opportunity almost croquet style like you mentioned but the one thing with Geneseo so far is how well they've been able to transition it fast with defense going into offense they've been able to move the ball very fast and charge upfield like you said and another great save there by Kenyon a battle between the goalies and we have 304 left on the clock here in the first quarter going to be a turnover there for the Lakers as they look to go upfield Jimmy Atkinson now with the ball. He spins around, finds an open. Brady Sullivan. Jesse O looks to slow things down just a little bit. Things have gotten a little chaotic over the last few minutes, like you mentioned. Jesse O kind of not really want. It looks like they kind of avoid from what they started off with. A very slow-paced possession type style of game where over the last few minutes it's just been a run and gun. Anytime you get the ball, you turn and go. And right now, Jessio, it's not really looking like they want to play that style. No doubt about it. That's been their identity the entire season. This little shake off there for the Knights. They're going to take a shot. It goes wide of the goal. That was Robert ben Benilo, the junior attackman. Jenny looks to make some things happen now. It's going to get dumped off. Geneseo, they have an open shot. They take it. It's going to go wide right. Kaminsky. Couldn't quite get the pass to go where he wanted it to. Brady Sullivan ends up with it. Spencer Frank now over to McComsky. As Geneseo calls out some plays here. They're going to take a shot above the net there. And this is an interesting first quarter because you wonder how this game was going to go. Geneseo, the highest scoring team in the Suniac. Almost scored right there. Another good save by Kenyon. I have to readjust the net there. It looked like it shook a little bit. Looks a little off angle up here. Kenyon trying to hug that post rather tightly. I mean, Oswego being able to weather the storm there. Jesse had a lot of offense going there, moving the ball well. Their passes were a lot more crisp going into that possession there compared to a couple previous times where we saw a couple of their passes create a faulty error leading Oswego the other way. But another good stop there by Kenyon there to keep Jesse at bay. And 0-0, zero, zero, almost a one minute to go in the first quarter, Luke, like you mentioned, clearly not really expected out of these two teams, although Oswego playing a couple less games, not really averaging much. But either way, I mean, it's been close. Absolutely has been close. So Oswego now turns the ball over. Be Geneseo with the clear. 48 seconds left on the clock in the first. Geneseo looks to take some charge here. Break the ice. Jimmy Atkinson is going to pass it over to Jack Elrigal. Oh, the pass around. And Selder. Geneseo. Pass it over to X. 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Scored a well, defense on him. Gets around him. He's going to find an open man. They're going to take a shot here. And it's going to be the first goal of the first quarter. Christian Marcello Jr., the senior attackman. Not quite the Ice Knights, but does break the ice here at Laker Turf. Makes it a 1-0 ball game for the Geneseo Knights. And that is exactly what you saw coming. You saw Scordo try and sandwich that far right side, leaving him open at the point, being able to let one fly. And the shooting lane was definitely open for Geneseo there, able to tally one past Kenyon in the dying moments of the first quarter. We have another face-off. Haven't seen one of these in a while. 
nine seconds left on the clock. They did not start the clock, so might have a little bit of an opportunity. It's going to be a turnover there. Nothing will probably come out of this one with just four seconds left in the quarter. Probably look to just get a pass off here. Maybe not. He's just going to hold it. They still didn't start the clock. He's going to take a Hail Mary. That one goes over the netting of the fence. Might have been good if it was a field goal, if we had a field goal post out there. Nonetheless, 1-0 ball game for Geneseo. As they score right at the end regulation in the first quarter. Now, Thomas, you mentioned some players to watch earlier on, but I want to really key in on those guys because we haven't really seen... I mean, you said Christian Marcelo Jr., he made an impact, obviously, but not so much on the Oswego end. Yeah, absolutely. Gavin Nelson, a little quiet there in that first quarter of play, but at the end of the day, you look at this team, they really score by committee. It's not really an individual-based team. You're not looking at one or two guys. You're looking at about four or five, and Gavin Nelson, you could go any of those five, and really it's just a spin of the wheel to see who's going to be able to tally the most points on the day but on the other hand you look at Christian Marcello Jr. got one goal today so far they played RIT a couple days back only one shot on goal allowed for him really not a good day for Geneseo losing 14-4 to against the Tigers one of the better lacrosse programs in the state but before that SUNY Potsdam six points Plattsburgh a goal He's been rather consistent, averaging around two points per game so far as of late, a couple, couple higher points. But on the other hand, you look at the coaches wise, and it goes back with Jess C.O. They, new coach, familiar coach, so for the Lakers, Drew Bezak, taking over the program in January of 2022. I mean, he was previously with the Lakers, and then Sean Eccles took over for a year, and now it's Andrew Daly. So Bezak, obviously, Knows a few of these guys, a couple of the seniors they started off with just a couple of years ago, but turning around this Jesseo program, a nine and eight record last season, six and one in conference play, now four and zero oh in conference play this season so far, and a ten and four record. So he's really turned around this program, not as much as a drastic turnaround, but definitely trending in the right direction for Jesseo. No doubt about that, and, and his time at Oswego, like you said, a familiar face in his first game back at the Laker Turf Stadium. Led Oswego to a 40 and 44 record in his time here. Two SUNYAC tournament appearances, and some of these Oswego seniors on Senior Day may be looking to get a little bit of revenge on their old pal here. As the second quarter is underway, it's BB Syrup who's going to win the faceoff for Geneseo. And a little bit of an infraction there. It's going to be Oswego's win. Let me just say, Thomas, BB Syrup, Hall of Fame name in the Absolutely. lacrosse game. No doubt about that. Jason Donglewick here, he's going to pass off. That's Liam Sexton. Sexton over to O'Connor here. Oswego looking to break their ice a little bit. You need a good, you need a good possession here for the Lakers. I mean, you played this Jesse team really, really tight in that first quarter, and that's a great start. But I think you need a couple good opportunities here to really set the tone. And there it is. <laughs> Speak of the devil, you need a good opportunity. You might as well pass it over to Gavin Elston because whenever he touches the ball, some magic happens. 14-24 left on the clock here in the second quarter. And Oswego gets their first goal of the game. Gavin Elston just been stellar all season long. That's his 16th goal on the year. As he inches closer and is now tied goal leaders Corey O'Connor and Max Broadman all 16 apiece four game goal streak now for Gavin Elston being able to rip one past and get a goal here to even things up the Lakers a great shot there by Elston we talked about but now they need a really good stop here against Geneseo if anything turn it around we got another flag coming out and it seems like Oswego will throw this ball away and Jeff Seal will go right back up on the man advantage. Not a good turnaround for the Lakers. I don't know exactly what they called there. Or who they're sending to the box. It looks like it's going to be Cameron Yost. It's going to be a minute for a slash. And that's not what the Lakers wanted just after scoring here. So they got a minute in the box there. Geneseo we're going to get some shots on goal within this minute as they hand the flag back over to the man in the stripes. Geneseo now 
on the attack. Give it over to Gerlach, and they're going to stop play just for a second here. As they reset the shot clock here. It's going to be 80 seconds, so the shot clock will outlast the penalty. Give it over to X. Now over to Gerlach. Gerlach passes out. Makes its way over to Marcelo Jr. with the goal. Bring it around town here. Gerlach with it now. Passes upfield. Fake pass. He's going to give it back over. That's Brady Sullivan. It's Geneseo just looking for an open shot here. Can't quite find it. They're going to find it right now. It's number seven. Robert Panillo, the junior attackman from about 25 feet out. Snipes that one behind Aiden Kenyon. Makes it a 2-1 ball game here at Laker Turf. And that was 19th on the season. And you look at this so far. The Lakers, they're just taking some costly calls here. And it's been able to bite them the other way. And Geneseo, two goals now to get the lead back. And Oswego, they had had a great start but the thing is they're taking some costly penalties that are leading into the back of their net this is a tough contest you're really fighting yourself at this point I mean you're on the man advantage for the Knights and they're able to score we mentioned how powerful their offense is in terms of scoring you have two guys over the 30 goal mark you have one you have Marcello now with 30 as well it just goes on and on. They've got a lot of guys that can score. We talked about Oswego having a diverse group in terms of goal scoring ability. Jesse, same boat, same consequences for the Lakers. No doubt about that. Lakers already with three penalties in this game. And Geneseo knows a thing or two about having to deal with penalties. In their last game, they had a season high six penalties. And that was their loss to RIT by a big margin. Geneseo now can't quite get the pass to go off. It's going to be Oswego who gets possession. Connor Aspen all year. He's going to look to take the ball upfield. Sheds his defender with a spin move. If they look to push him out, he's going to have to pass off. It does. It's going to be Evan Coleman. Evan Coleman was called for a penalty earlier. Has a little nice dodge there. He's going to look to split some defenders. Spin move. Loses the ball for just a second. He's going to try and get it off. As Pav comes out of goal for that one. Could have been dangerous there for Genesia. As Genesio looks to up their ante to 3-1. They're going to go upfield. They're going to find an open man. Dumps it right off, and it's going to go behind Kenyon. A nice tic-tac-toe play there for Geneseo. Jimmy Atkinson, the sophomore attackman, on that goal. Make it a 3-1 ball game here at Laker Turf. Jimmy Atkinson's 31st on the year in a wide-open shooting lane. That's just blown coverage by the Lakers. Now trailing a 2-0 run as of late. Geneseo with the mojo. They had, you saw it. Uh, I can't remember the defender's name, but be, Oswego being able to trend up field. Yeah. Costly turnover, goes the other way, finds the back of the net. And Jesseo now with possession once more. You need a stop here or else you're going to be digging yourself a deeper hole. Yeah, clears are very important in this game. And Oswego's been pretty good at clearing the ball so far this season. An 88.1 clear percentage success rate. And that pass one by uh, Evan Coleman there was not one of them. Geneseo now looks to go on the attack. They're going to pass it upfield. It's going to be Benilo, who has a goal. Going to go right, looks to pass off. He's going to look to shoot, and it's going to be another goal there. Geneseo coming out with back-to-back -back goals in about 20 seconds there. Benilo with his second of the day. And just what I thought in the back of my head, timeout Oswego. Clearly expected after that. Geneseo stringing together two quick goals in a matter of about 30 seconds. And Jesse, oh, we talked about how they were rolling and how they'd be able to score fast. Clearly it shows here they notched together two in less than a minute. And now they get a three-goal lead, forcing Oswego to take a timeout. Rightfully so, though. They haven't had anything going since they scored. Ever since Oswego was able to get their first goal, Jesse has just stormed right back and just taken momentum, taken the field, and taken the Laker turf dead silent. 
dead silent is right. We have a huge crowd here in the bleachers here on senior day looking to celebrate some of these seniors for Oswego. But if you are Oswego, if you are Coach Daly, what are you telling your team in the lineup right now? And how do you get back into this game being down 4-1? You guys really need to be able to keep your coverage tight at this point. A lot of opportunities. The last two goals have just been blown coverage on that far side and leaving Kenyon really wide out to dry. And the Lakers, their coverage wasn't too good on those two points. I mean, 11-23 to go. It's, I mean, the game's far from over, clearly. But on the other hand, you need a stop here. The last two times, Jesse has came down the turf and sent it up right in the back of the net and roughly around the same spot and same scenario. I mean, it all starts off with a face-off here. You need to calm down, regroup, get back into an offensive possession. But regardless of the face-off, you need a stop here. And that's been the key to winning for us. We go really the entire season is defense because this is not a very high-scoring like, squad this season. You look at two of their past wins, just 10 goals and 11 goals. And that was against New Paltz and Oneonta. Just holding opponents to not many goals this entire season. That's been the way to win for us, we go so far. A little bit of sloppy play there, but it ends up in Geneseo's hands. That's going to be number 31, Ethan Cohn, who takes the ball upfield. Geneseo will have another possession here. Geneseo, with quite the time of possession, it seems like so far here, 20 minutes into the game now. Seems like they've always had the ball. They're going to get a good look here, and it's going to go wide of Aiden Kenyon. That was Benilo on the shot, looking for his hat trick. Geneseo now takes it around goal. Sullivan passes it out. Going to end up back in Spencer Frank's hands. He's going to go left. He's going to look to pass it off over to McComsky. McComsky found an open man right in front of the crease there but broken up that was a great play by Jackson Cummings there sophomore deep hole just under a minute left in the possession clock Robert Benilo he dumps it off Genesee is going to have a good look here and that ball just floats away from Marcelo Jr a little bit wide right there Got some power behind it. Geneseo resets. It's Sullivan. He's going to go around. Gets shut off there. He's going to get dump it off. Geneseo finds a cutter. And couldn't quite get it to go there. Geneseo laid on the shots. Not quite on goal. Still getting them off regardless. And we got a crease violation there for Geneseo. Brady Sullivan got a little pinky toe on that white circle. Swigo catches a break there. Geneseo, it looks like based off of the last few possessions, they've been unable to really maintain that speed that Geneseo's been having as of late, and their cutting and their shift and movement has really made it difficult for us. We go to keep track of them, and that's been really leading us we go to trail against Genesee. All that shifting in front of Kenyon, allowing Oswego to be a little bit confused on the defensive coverage, be able to find the back of that, but they need a stop here. Genesee just running away with the clock as of right now. Yeah, Oswego with another turnover there. It was an over and back. Looked like Jackson Cummings lost the ball in the sky. It's a cloudy day here at Laker Turf. A windy day at that. Jack Helregul. With the ball now, he's going to pass it over. Gets over to Marcelo Jr. Marcelo Jr. over to Bolin. Bolin now dumps it right off. Jenny's going to look for a shot here. It's going to get shut off. It's going to be another penalty. It's going to be on Tyler Stevenson, the midfielder. Jenny with the swim dodge there. It's going to get bounced around. They're going to look for a shot. It's going to hit the outside of the goal, but possession is going to stay with Geneseo here. So I believe it's going to be Tyler Stevenson that goes to the box. Stevenson has had a rough day at the office, to say the least. I mean, we saw in that first quarter, got ragged, 
ragdolled her out pretty good for about two, three minutes or so. Had a penalty in the first, and now again here in the second. Not a good day so far for number 34, and Oswego really, really needs to stop here on the man up for Jesse. No doubt about it, and it's uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of Oswego. Not really penalized too often so far in their play, especially in Suniac games. Already four today, 8-13 left in the half. Geneseo with a little spin shot there. The fancy footwork of Benilo. Good save, though, by Kenyon. A costly turnover here, though. Jenny now. Looking to get a shot off. In Kenyon with that save. Now Swigo now takes the ball of court off the field. Swigo really looking to get something going here on the turnaround. I mean, Stevenson now out of the box. Swigo kills it off. The man advantage wasn't there for Geneseo. A couple good opportunities so far for the Knights on the man up. We see a couple times they've been able to tally, but right there holding sound on the defensive end. Aiden Kenyon, a few good stops, but Oswego really, really struggling with Geneseo's speed out in front. They've been really trying to carve them up like a nice Christmas ham. <laughs> a Christmas ham, huh? Christmas ham. Christmas ham and what are we in, almost May? Could be. Almost. Almost that Christmas. Oswego looking for a present, and that present is a goal here. Sexton now, going to pass it over. Ends up with Brodman. Brodman over to Don Lewick. Don Lewick, he's going to dodge right, looks for a man, looks for a cutter. Just out of the reach of Corey O'Connor, the leading scorer for this Oswego team. That was a good look there by Don Lewick on the ISO. Really there on the back door, O'Connor was right there waiting. It looked like there was a passing lane open from up here, just a little bit too far out of reach for O'Connor on that back door. But Oswego, they really, ever since that fourth goal in the timeout, they've played rather close with Geneseo. I mean, Geneseo's had a few more shots, a few more possessions, but on the other hand, that's also coming back to the costly turnovers that Oswego's been having. It absolutely is. And Geneseo taking a little bit of a wild shot there as McComsky, and it goes wide, wide left. They're going to dump it off here. It's McComsky that gets it again. They're just going to look for an open guy. Benilo now, he's going to dodge, pass it over around X. Makes its way to an open man, and it's going to go right in between the legs. Nutmegged Aiden Kenyon there for Geneseo, his fifth goal of the game. And that was Spencer Frank the Midi. Not a good response by the Lakers right there on the defensive end. They just seem, in a way, lost right now. I mean, the timeout kind of reset them. They seemed like they were doing okay on the defensive end, but in a way, they were also seeming a little bit weathering the storm in a way. Geneseo, really, just any chance they get, they're letting it fly, whether it's by the net, whether it's on net, whether it hits someone out in front. But either way, I mean, Oswego not really being tenacious on the defensive end. They're letting Geneseo work this ball around them. No doubt about that, and Jackson Cummings called for a violation there on the face-off. Geneseo wins that one. And you look at Stevenson right now, I mean, he hasn't really had a good day so far for the Lakers. Their offense has been really quiet. They have one goal to start, but that's one more than they had against Alfred in the half, and they scored none in that first half against the Saxons on Wednesday, so their offense rather quiet as of late. With Geneseo, their offense has just been moving on full cylinders right now. And they're going to get a good look here. Geneseo with the shot, and it's going to go off the pipe there. Marcelo Jr. And the Lakers get a little bit of a lucky break. Geneseo will go back on the attack. Jenny will take a lefty shot, and it's the sixth of the ball game for Geneseo. That's Cole Bowlin, the attackman, number 16, for the sixth goal of the game 
for Jenny. 440 left in the first half. And Oswego, just a string of not great defense from a really good defensive team. And that leads it to a five-goal deficit here. Bolin now his third point of the game, and it was a pretty solid start for the Lakers. And right now, we mentioned Geneseo shooting everywhere they get, and a perfect example on that last goal. It was a little bit out of really the attacking zone and point-blank opportunity, but they got it through, got it past Kenyon, and they got another lead now. So As there's some fighting over the ball here, it's going to stick with... Geneseo and as Geneseo will look to score I'll just mention that it's never too late to have fun with hosts Chloe Sienna and Anna Farron from playing games to funny stories the kind of late show is the type of show you want to stay up to watch every other Wednesday at 9.30 on channel 10.2 Oswego now causes the turnover Aiden Kenny will look to go upfield with it gives it over to Cameron Yost They're going to cause another turnover on the clear there. Jenny's going to find an open man. It could be an easy shot for him. And good defense. The turnaround defense there for Evan Coleman stopping a potential seventh goal for Geneseo. And it's going to stay with Oswego too. Oswego needs to be a little more tenacious on the attack. I mean, they've seemed rather slow in their ball movement and Anytime Oswego's had a pass, and right there, a little miscommunication going the other way. Geneseo, it just seems to, their coverage has been unreal. Most of the time, just constant two-man, three-man, sometimes even four men on one Oswego player, and just not only covering up those passing lanes, but being really difficult to even get a pass off in the first place. It has been really difficult to get anything off for Oswego. As we get time out here. Coach Daly looks to regroup with his squad as they look to get some points on the board here. A good time to take a timeout, though. I mean, the Lakers in the offensive zone for the first time in quite some time, and Geneseo has really had everything. And they've had all the looks, all the shots here in the second quarter of play. I mean, just it just goes to show the shots right now so far in this for in this second quarter alone, 14 to one in favor of the Knights compared to the first quarter, 14-9, to nine, where it was relatively close, but Geneseo just goes to show they have been everywhere. One power play goal already. Faceoffs have been relatively similar, but they've also won the ground ball battle, and overall just Geneseo perfect on the clears. Oswego not really as good in leading the turnover battle as well as Oswego has seven. Geneseo with three just in this second quarter alone. It just goes to show how well Jesse always transitioned going in the second quarter of play. Yeah, and they've been incredible defensively along with Oswego really this entire season. Oswego only allowed 87 goals. That's outside of the Suniac as well, so that's their entire season. And inside the Suniac only gave up 33 goals to teams within the conference. Geneseo is tied with them, only allowing 33 goals to Suniac teams. Both of these squads know how to play well defensively within the conference, and it's showing right here for these Knights. As we have 304 left here in the first half at Laker Turf Stadium. Luke Rosenthal alongside Thomas Turgeon. And Oswego will look to get things going on the board here, make the crowd a little bit happier, get some noise going here in the stands. It's court. No, excuse me. It's Gavin Elston here who's going to dodge. He's going to go in left. He's going to look for a shot, and he's going to find a goal. Gavin Elston, number seven, as the Oswego Lakers get their second goal of the game, 2.42 left on the clock, and that's a good way to start this engine. In my head, I was thinking Elston with possession right there. He had a lot of open space. All in, I was thinking in my head, just keep drive, drive, drive. That's what he did. Pretty much take it right in, get it past Pav. Oswego with a good response there. Elston really doing all the work in all fairness. I mean, he didn't really have a pass to go with, so he just took it himself. Getting able to get through a couple Geneseo defenders, let one go, get a couple shots on goal. I really think that's where it starts off. 
with this Lakers team. They they got in the offensive zone, shoot the ball. I mean, you've seen Jess Seo do it plenty of times, and it's been able to benefit them. They've been able to continuously have possession and beat out the races for the balls, getting a couple ground balls here and there, and that's all where it starts. Just the little things that Jess Seo has done so well today have put them up by four, but Sweeter really needs to take a couple notes out of their own textbook and be able to get back to the way they want to play. No doubt about that. And Gavin Elson now taking over the scoring lead for this Oswego team with his second of the ball game. Now leads the team with 17 goals. It's Donglewick now. He's going to go right. Maybe look to dump it off here. And he will. Over to Brodman. Brodman loses it. Tries to box his man out, and he will. He gets regains possession. Jack Delaney behind the goal now. Gives it over to Elston. He might look for his hat trick here. He will. Maybe not. I thought he was going to look for a shot. It looked like he was off. looking for a potential pass right to O'Connor, which was right in the slot path. But... It seemed it was either that or he really just wasn't able to follow through on a shot very well. It just seemed like a high floater. I wouldn't even say he got 50% through it if that was the case. It looked like that. Jason Donglewick with some incredible transition defense, able to stop the fast break there and get the ball out of Michael Corwin's stick. Now Swigo will look to attack once again. Connor Aspinall. Haven't called out his name just yet. He's going to go around left, passes it over to X, makes its way back over to Delaney. Delaney with the spin. Going to try and shoulder his way in there, gets shut off, and he's going to lose the ball there. A little push from behind there with the frustration. Mark Pav ends up with the ball. Geneseo clears. Really good defense there by Geneseo and what we've noticed so far a lot of size on that back end Kevin Mooden being able to get a stop there and really relentless on Delaney standing at 6-2 and being able to box out this Oswego offense is this Geneseo defense a lot of size and it goes all the way it starts off with your goaltender with Pav Pav standing at 6-1 you have many defenders on this Geneseo team standing six foot tall or being able to really get a lot of size around Pav and box out those passing lanes has been huge for the Knights today. Has been huge as Coach Bizek calls a timeout here and we're used to saying Coach Bizek for us. We go now. He's coming in with this Geneseo team with 22.1 seconds left in the first half. They'll look to try and make something happen with a little bit of time left here in the second quarter. But for us, we go. You mentioned that they took a pretty good time out earlier on, offensively speaking, and they ended up getting a goal. If you're Coach Daly, what are you saying here defensively speaking? How do you stop this Geneseo team from scoring the potential seventh goal of the first half? I think you just got weather the storm here. 22 seconds to go here in this first half. Maybe try and it might be a little too much to ask for, but maybe try and turn it around and force a quick turnover. <coughs> Excuse me, however, but this team right now, they need to stop, and they haven't really gotten much in here in this second quarter. Jesio, it seems like any time they've taken the ball, they've either had a really good opportunity or it's been a goal. And you got about a 50-50 chance of one of those happening any time has had possession in the offensive zone. But right now, Oswego needs a turnover. They do need a turnover or at least just a stop at that to stop the bleeding here in the first half. As Benilo is going to start with the ball here in the box. Passes it around. I'm sure Coach Drew Bizek drew something up here. So we're going to see some cuts, I'm sure. Or just a straight up shot, and that is exactly what Oswego needed. Got to stop turn and go. Nine seconds left here. Kenya just looks to go upfield with it. We're going to get a stoppage of play. So we're going to have a quick opportunity here. Don't, got six seconds to work. Don't quite know what they just called there. Corey O'Connor, he's going to look for a shot here. He drives in. He shoots. Fall away shot there. He's going to go wide left with a little bit of a push in the back. He's going to have some questions for the ref there. Oswego goes into halftime down 6-2 to two here at Laker Turf Stadium in Turge. Just give me your quick thoughts here the first half as we go into halftime here before the break. Oswego down 6-2 on senior night, senior day, excuse me. 
Not a great first half, not a great showing for them. Through. Not an ideal first half. First quarter, they, I thought they looked great. They, it seemed like they were playing their best defensive lacrosse, although the offense wasn't showing. Second quarter, different story. Their defense went out the door and took about a solid 10-minute break, and then roughly around those four, five, four, five minutes, it was right back to where they kind of want. I wouldn't say back to completely normal in the way they wanted to play, but definitely trending in the right direction for the Lakers, keeping Jessio off the board in those final four minutes and being able to get one to cut the lead down to four. No doubt about that. As we have a quick halftime here, we're going to wrap up and throw it to break, but don't go anywhere because after the break, we got second half action of Lakers sports at Laker turf right here on WTOP 10. Welcome back to Major Discussions. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Back here to Laker Turf Stadium, today's Oswego men's lacrosse team taking on the Geneseo Knights on Senior Day. And the Lakers down 6-2 to two here in the first half, going into the second half with just a little bit left on the clock of this halftime. I'm Luke Rosenthal alongside Thomas Turgeon. And Thomas, quite the first half that we had here. Geneseo, quite a stalemate there between the teams in the first quarter. And then the second quarter, things kind of got out of control for us, Vigo. Yeah, things got out of control really, really fast in that second quarter play. Oswego going into the second quarter, only down one, but it wouldn't last long. I mean, Gavin Elston really being able to get the goal at the end, but either way, they make it a 1-1 game early, early about 40 seconds into the second quarter. But after that, Geneseo stringing together three in a matter of two minutes, and that adding two more roughly around the five minute mark. Oswego able to get one back with Elston at the end with two minutes left to go in that second quarter to bring it down to four. But overall, that second quarter really you need to wash away for the Lakers. No doubt about that. Oswego not really used to this sort of scoring output from their opponents this season. Like we'd mentioned earlier, they allowed the least amount of goals so far Two teams in the Suniac with just 33, and here with six goals in the first half. Not a great output from them defensively. But we are going to move on and thank some of our seniors here on the crew today as we're celebrating Senior Day, not just for the Oswego men's lacrosse team, but for all of our members here on today's broadcast. So we will give a quick shout-out to all of us. It's Thomas Turgeon, my partner here today, myself, Luke Rosenthal. Marcus Lopez, Justin Clint, Brian Ciccone, and our general manager, Merrick Patowski. I want to thank everybody here from WTOP 10 
all the seniors that put in all the work to make these broadcasts happen. Not enough can be said about some of these guys. And it's an incredible, incredible crew to work with. It has been really the entire season and really all four of our four years here at Us We Go. So we do want to give a quick shout out to them and a quick thank you to them as well. And we'll move over now to some of these Geneseo goals. We had mentioned Robert Benilo having a great day. He has two on the day already. Bolin with one and Marcelo Jr. with one as well. Take me through some of these, Turgeon. Yeah, overall, you look at a couple of the guys that just stand out. Benilo, two goals and six shots already. But on the other hand, you have a guy with Sullivan not being able to tally any goals so far, but second on or third on the team in shots with four. And you have a guy like Atkinson getting a goal and assist, two points, and really just a spread out attack. Benilo, two points. Bolin, three points. You have Atkinson and Frank also with a goal and assist apiece. But really, this Geneseo team, they, they can hurt you any way you want. But that first quarter, just the start you wanted for the Lakers. Second quarter, not really what you want. Yeah, and if they are going to win this game and are going to prevail, you would think it was probably going to be low scoring and giving up six goals in the first half. Not a great mark to set, especially being down four goals now, when really you haven't had much offense to speak of through the first 30 minutes of play here. Not really too many shots on goal. It's been a lot of defense and a lot of just fast break action for us. We go not really being able to get any behind goalie Pav, the senior there. He's been stellar all game long. And really, Aiden Kenyon, shout out to him too, who we're celebrating today on Senior Night. He has given up six goals. Defense hasn't given him all the help in the world at times, but he has been pretty stellar in goal so far as well. He's been really good all season long, and he has a few saves of his own to speak of today too. He's looked good at times. Absolutely, a couple key saves. But the other thing is the amount of shots Jesse has been able to get off. And so far, we enter the half, Jessio with 30 shots compared to Oswego's 12. But you think about it, you look in the first quarter, the shots were 14-9 to in favor of the Knights. Relatively comparable, though. A pretty close contest, as we mentioned in that first quarter. Second quarter, different story. Geneseo, 16 shots compared to the Lakers, 3. And one of them found the back of that. So I guess your shot percentage isn't really that bad in the second quarter. It's that quarter. 33%. That it's sounds pretty good. It's not 33%, but <laughs> either way, you look at this team right now, you got to get more shots on goal than three if you're going to try and really claw away at this lead that Genesio's had. I mean, you got the last goal entering halftime, but you need to start off here in the third quarter strong or else it's going to be a really tough task. For sure, and you look at some of these other stats that are really telling of what we've seen transpire through the first 30 minutes. 16 turnovers for Oswego compared to Geneseo's eight, and 11 of those 16 turnovers were caused by Geneseo. Geneseo's been playing some really, really tight defense and not allowing Oswego to clear the ball as easily as they would like to. They've already, they're only 13 of 16 on clears for a team that has cleared pretty much everything this entire season with 88% success rate. Oswego not being able to get much done in that aspect of the game. And then Oswego, four penalties, uncharacteristic of this team throughout the entire season. And four penalties, that's just in the first half alone. Geneseo able to cash in on one of those, to go one for four on the extra man up opportunities. And Geneseo being disciplined all game long. They don't have a single penalty after having six in their last game against RIT. Yeah, Geneseo keeping their composure. And, I mean, right now this is – all in their hands it's you don't really want to say that as an Oswego fan but right now that's the case I mean you kept your composure Oswego's taken some costly penalties that have really offset their team I mean they they escaped one with a couple seconds later Genesio scoring but not on the main advantage but you have to get back into play and over, overall, Oswego really need to get back into the swing of things, and it starts with keeping your composure here in this second half. Geneseo has done it very well, though. They have, as we have 30 seconds before second half action is underway. But I'll mention that your best friends, Stephanie, Maddie, and Cece, are here to brighten up your day. Produced by an all-women's crew, this show is just the right amount of chaos and fun. Watch Off the Clock every other Tuesday at 9.30 p.m on WTOP 10. We're almost off the clock here at our time at Oswego. We only got 30 minutes of action here for our entire college careers, Thomas. It's a, it's quite the uh, unbelievable 
set of circumstances here. Couldn't believe that we made it this far. Can't believe that Oswego has made it this far as well on being undefeated in the Suniac. They're looking to stay undefeated with 30 minutes here. So, Thomas, what are some of the keys to win here for both Geneseo and Oswego here in the second half? Oswego, like we said a couple minutes ago, it's keeping your composure and staying off of the penalties, and really it's cost them the entire time. I feel like Geneseo on the same thing is keep things the way they're going. I mean, you've been winning the ground ball battles, and you see another face-off here going in favor of the Knights, and just continuing that mojo that they've really branched off of in that second quarter of play that kind of planted the seed in the first quarter sprouted out in the second quarter let's see if it really if it continues to grow or if maybe it'll cut back a little bit as we go needing a good defensive stop here to start things off yeah i don't know if any plants are growing in this weather something's not out right now just cloud cover all throughout laker turf and geneseo with a quick goal there excuse me it's william mckunsky with his first goal of the evening just a quick one for geneseo right there just 33 seconds left or into the second half here not a not a great start for us we go here most definitely not we mentioned how this could be the last game for laker athletics here at the laker turf for home game wise but on the other hand this team only the top four teams make the playoffs for the men's lacrosse suniac conference and one and two seeds get the home home field advantage. And right now, Oswego's got a tough schedule. They got Geneseo today. They've got Cortland next Wednesday, a team they've never beaten in program history. However, Geneseo did beat Cortland this year. Just goes to show how strong their program has made strides. And Cortland, a well-known, very strong lacrosse program over the years. And then you got Potsdam to wrap up the year, which Potsdam hasn't really had a strong season. So that's a really a win that you should expect. But if you want home field advantage going into the playoffs, you're going to need at least a win against one, if not both, Jesseo and Cortland. Yeah, this game right here is a good litmus test for that Cortland team. As you mentioned, Oswego not really recording a win in program history against the Red Dragons here. Oswego is going to look to drive in. They take a quick shot. That's Broadman right in the stick of the goalie. Geneseo now. It's Pav. He looks for an open man. He's going to find one. Pass a little bit short, but ends up making its way over to Kevin Leon. Jenny now will just pass around, get some subs on offense. So they look to slow things down here. Five goal lead for the Knights. It's Spencer Frank. He's going to pass it over. That's Robert Manilo. With two goals on the day, he charges in. He's going to look to t jump off here. He will. And it's going to go over the net there. Over Aiden Kenyon. That was McComsky who just scored a few minutes ago. Brady Sullivan, almost with the crease violation, able to walk the tightrope there. Going to pass it over to Marcelo Jr. Marcelo Jr. over to Frank. Frank's going to look to dodge here. He's going to go left, beat his defender, and right into the stick of Aiden Kenyon with another save on the day. Chris Schmidt brings the ball up. He's going to pass it over. That's Jack Delaney. Jack Delaney over to Sexton now. Sexton with a fake pass. He goes all the way to the far side of the field, passes right over to Gavin Elston. Gavin Elston. We'll look for his hat trick on the day. He's going to dump off. Ends up with Dong Lewick. Going to pass it over. It's going to end up with Trey Jones. Trey Jones, one of the assist leaders on this squad. Sexton now. Back over to Jones. Jones to Dong Lewick. Dong Lewick's going to charge in. He's going to shed his defender. He's going to dump off. Find Sexton at X. Sexton now dumps it over to O'Connor. O'Connor looks for a pass, gets broken up by the Geneseo defense. And that's things that Geneseo has been doing all day long, Thomas. Their unit has just been 
really, really covering up those lanes and really being able to crunch down in that slot, cover up every passing lane, every seam that you are trying to look for if you're the Lakers. And you look at Trey Jones and Liam Sexton really struggling to find anything on the cuts, on the spins. Just nothing going for the Lakers offense in that possession. Genesee able to really quite easily handle off this Oswego offense, not generating any opportunities. It's really working the ball around, trying to get an opening, but nothing there. They're going to have something here. Tyler Stevenson with a great cause turnover there. He runs the ball all the way up the field. Sort of in no man's land here. We don't really see Tyler Stevenson on offense too much. He's going to get had a few turf burns today. Though, a little bit, sure. yeah. Maybe want to get some uh, some of those tight leggings on. So he's going to make his way over to the bench. Oswego. We'll look to attack here. Stevenson gets subbed out. That's going to be for Trey Jones, the junior. And Brodman now. Couldn't quite shed his defender. Going to give it over to Sexton. Sexton. It's going to go to Trey Jones now as Trey Jones looks to rev his engine a little bit. He's going to dodge right. Spin around. He's going to fake a shot. Spin around again. And that was a brilliant sequence there. Couldn't quite get the shot to go in the goal, but finds an open Sexton. And Sexton a little bit wide of the mark. You're not going to get a shot off here. And it's going to go the other way. Oswego getting a little bit of positive, I guess, from that. A couple opportunities. But Genesee has really been not allowing Oswego anything. It's just suffocating this offense out. They're saying, Work the clock all you want. We can wait. We have a five-goal lead, and we're just going to wait until you guys miss right now because Oswego just not getting able any really shots on goal. I mean, Genesio just whistles one by there, so they kind of in the same boat, but on the other hand, they also have a five-goal lead, so they'll take it as they want it right now, and Oswego, they just can't get any shots to even get to Pav in the first place. Yeah, this Oswego team not really used to having to shoot from far out. They like to find some open cutters in the middle of the field there, but Geneseo defensively able to charge right in there to the shark tank and close in very nicely. As they look to score their eighth goal of the game right here, it's Benilo. Benilo, he's going to try to find something, and it's going to be out of his stick at this point. Marcelo Jr. ends up with the ball. It's going to go over the head of his intended target. And over and back here for the Knights. How sweet go ball now. Aiden Coney picks it up. He's going to give it over to Elston now. Elston to O'Connor. Just under 70 seconds left on the possession clock. Liam McClary now bounces off his defender, finds an open man, ends up in O'Connor's stick, back over to Elston. Elston now, stutter step, back to his defender. He's going to charge in, he's going to shoot, and he's going to score. Gavin Elston, throw your hats, Laker fans, throw them in the field because that is a hat trick for number seven, the senior. Third of the game. Makes it a 7-3 to three ball game now, Geneseo leading. And those types of plays from one of your leading scorers is exactly what you need to get yourself back in this ball game. I feel like at this point you got to allow to get the ball to Gavin Elston. I mean, they've been giving him the ISO, but Elston's been able to get by his defender. The protection of the ball on his stick, being able to get by the defender, get a shot through. He's been shooting low on Pav and been able to solve him pretty solidly. Cut the lead down to four. I mean, not a horrible lead for Geneseo right now, but he's a key star into bringing in Oswego close into this contest as Elston. The rest of the offense a little quiet. They've had a couple good breaks, but overall you haven't seen much of the individuals that you kind of expected. You haven't really seen much of O'Connor or Broadman or Sexton. They've all been relatively quiet. As Broadman takes a shot right there and it ends up right into the stick of Pav. Over to Bollinger. 
Bollinger over to Pav. I was going to find an open man. It's Kevin Leon. He spins around, sheds his defender. And gets his touch in the box. Geneseo now. Going to work the ball around as they get some subs onto the field. Ball is going to find Benilo in a second here. There you go. Over to McComsky. Bounce pass there. Not as quite as clean as they would like. McComsky is going to dump it right off. The Knights go up 8-3 in a brilliant play there. They answer Elston's third goal of the game with their eighth goal of the game. That's Brady Sullivan, the senior attackman. And we mentioned Sullivan at halftime. He's gotten a lot of shots on goal. He finally finds the back of that there being Kenyon through the wickets and now a five-goal lead back for Geneseo. Oswego, their defense is just hasn't had the day they wanted today, and it's really been apparent. They just see, can't seem to weather this Geneseo storm, and it's continued here into the third quarter. I mean, Oswego's controlled majority of the ball possession here in the third, but Geneseo, any chance they get, they've been having some really good looks. Although Oswego, they, they have been trending in the right direction. Just they need to shoot the ball more. And it, it comes to a point we saw in that game against Brockport earlier in the year. Shot the ball a lot. They got the job done, and it got in the back of the net quite frequent and often for the Lakers. It just seems their passes haven't been quick enough to get this Jesseo defense to shift. So Swigo, they work the ball around now. It's going to be Liam Sexton. Spins around, pivots his foot. Over to Trey Jones now, and like you said, you're seeing the sparks float a little bit for this Oswego team, but you need something something substantial to really ignite this fire and ignite this crowd. Trey Jones, he's going to shed his defender, and that shot is going to go wide right. Looks a little frustrated with himself there. Yeah, not enough torque there on the rotation, and just almost is dead aligned with the corner cone and just... Didn't get enough rotation there, just rolled right off his stick, and he had a really good opportunity there to cash in, but unable to do so. But they draw the flag here, so they will go up on the man up just in a few brief moments. It's going to be the first penalty on Geneseo so far in this game. They're going to stop the clock here. Possession clock ended, I believe. But it's going to stick with Oswego here. It's going to be a 30-second penalty for Geneseo, so it's going to have to be a quick set of offense here for Oswego if they're going to look to score man up. It's going to be number 30, Kevin Ellie, the senior deep hole, who goes to the box. Geneseo going to go five on a die defense. So Oswego will look to work things around. Ends up with O'Connor. O'Connor over to Broadman. They're going to need some quick movement here. Gavin Nelson over to Sexton. He's going to take a shot. And not quite enough power behind that one. Good turnover there. They're going to have a turnover. Corey O'Connor gets beat up right there in front of the crease. Couldn't quite get it to go. Some good opportunities there for the Lakers, and they get another turnover, suffocating defense for the Lakers. They go on the fast break. It's going to be even strength now. See if they can find somebody open as the defense tries to recover. It looks like they have. Gavin Elston now. Telling Corey O'Connor to go out wide. Passes it over to Brodman. Brodman has his teammates set in the position he wants them. He's going to go right. He's going to take a shot. And it's going to be another save for Geneseo. Mark Av in this game has just been unbelievable. Save after save here. So we have a whistle. I believe the ball is going to stay with Oswego. It's going to be a Geneseo penalty. It's two quick ones in this game. It has been, and Pav making another good save. We go back to the size of this team. I mean, that earlier opportunity with Corey O'Connor, he, he was met by the frame of six foot five Michael Corwin's defense. 
Hoffman for Geneseo. And then on the other hand, Pav just 6-2, a lot of stature for the goaltender, being a couple good saves. I mean, this team has really got a lot of size on the back end, being able to stop a lot of Geneseo's. Geneseo's attack, or Oswego's attack, a little bit on the smaller side compared to Geneseo's defense. So being able to really win with your size and your really tenacious defense for Geneseo is really keeping Oswego's offense quiet, but this man-up opportunity, I feel like they got to convert here. They have to convert. It's going to be Dominic Pagano with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. He's going to spend 30 seconds in the box. Broadman with the shot. Save. Another great save by Pav there. It's going to get kicked right over to him for his 11th save of the ball game. Matches Aiden Kenyon's 11 saves on the day. Geneseo now will probably just look to kill the rest of this penalty. It's Pagano. Spent some more time in the box to think about what he did. Geneseo will just look to work things around as they have some subs coming on now. It will be even strength in just a second here. In fact, it is even strength right about now. Komsky. He gets blown up right there, suffocating Oswego defense, but finds an open Atkinson. Atkinson dumps it off. They find Frank and Frank over to Mikomsky. Mikomsky takes a shot, and it's going to go off the stick of Aiden Kenyon there and wide left. He was looking for that top left corner. Good save by Kenyon, nudging it off, but... On the other hand, Yost, you mentioned a big hit there on Mikomsky right outside, uh, looking for a point-blank opportunity, and he was able to allow that shot to get through. But Kenyon, a good save, and we mentioned the goaltending battle. It's just been surreal today. Although eight goals for Geneseo so far, Kenyon has made it what could have been a lot more. And on the other hand, Pop had 20 saves in the game against RIT earlier in the week, and you mentioned he's got just as, almost just as much today, and he's been spectacular. So we just had a couple good corner shots where they've been trying to pick those corners. Pop's just had an answer for almost every single one. Yeah, the score is not indicative of how well Kenyon has been playing in this ball game. Geneseo just with a ton of shots in this one. And there it is, Thomas, the commentator's curse. You were saying it earlier. I mentioned one good thing about Aiden Kenyon, and there is another goal for Geneseo. And a nice goal at that. It's going to be Reese Gerlach with his first of the game, making a 9-3 ball game, 226 left in the third quarter. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. We went this far without a commentator's curse, and there you have it, folks. It'll always come and find us. And we've seen it in many of our days here and as they – slowly dwindle away as we go into uh, the end of the year but we've seen it almost every game the curse strikes again where he mentions something and it just seems to much like the hit on Kamiksky a couple minutes ago just blows up right in your face yep. and goes the other way exactly and something we haven't really keyed in on throughout this game they're the face-offs because two of the best in the Suniac going at it it's BB Syrup and Logan Prescott, and BB Syrup has gotten the better of Prescott throughout this one, but Geneseo just relentless going for the ground ball off that faceoff every single possession, it seems like. So we go. We'll look to try and turn things around. A minute 45 left here in the third at Laker Turf Stadium. Luke Rosenthal alongside Thomas Turgeon. Broadman charges in, gives it over to Elston. Elston has a cutter. Couldn't quite get it over to Sexton, but finds O'Connor instead. O'Connor, he's going to drive in right. Backs off a little bit. Over to Don Lewick now. Don Lewick fakes left, goes right. F step over his defender real quick, and that shot is going to be bounced right off a defender. Couldn't be a great feeling right there. And ends up with Pav. Pav starts off the fast break. Gets it over to Geneseo. And what a wild shot there thing with Oswego, though, there, they got the right idea. They're getting, they were trying to get a shot off. Don Lewick was trying to let it rip. 
The one thing that I have noticed overall, though, going right as you progress from first quarter to second to now third, the team itself, it looked like they were trying some creative stuff in that first quarter. There's a couple things that we really haven't seen this team do in the last few games, and it was working for them. They were generating some really good opportunities. Right now it seems like they're trying to rely a majority off of set plays and try and open up a passing lane, just work that ball around. But right now... Jassio has been reading it like an open book, and Oswego trailing hard right now against Jassio's offense. And no real consistency in the Lakers' offense so far. As we're going to have a penalty, and it's going to be on Oswego. As Robert Benilla goes down for a second there, they'll look to finish up this possession before a man for Oswego goes off. They're going to find a cutter, and another great stick there for Aiden Kenyon. And we'll see who goes off here. I believe it's going to be. Charlie Prashtinus, possibly a slash there. We'll see who goes into the box. Might be Stevenson once again. Looks like Stevenson again. It's going to be his second penalty of the game so far. So fifth penalty of the ball game for Oswego. 13.2 seconds left here in the third quarter. You can turn the shot clock off right now. There's 16 seconds left on the shot clock. But that's irrelevant in this position. Geneseo can have a great opportunity to score for their – make their total goals double digits. The one thing with this Geneseo team that I think Oswego might have a really tough challenge with is Oswego has been able to mount comebacks against – a couple of the teams that they've played against here in the third and fourth quarter where they haven't really been able to find something to spark a comeback in this game. And it, compared to previous games, whether it's Plattsburgh, whether it's Oneonta, whether it's Brockport, they, they just really haven't been able to find a sense of momentum, a trend in the right direction. You typically say how it's a game of runs well. Right now, Geneseo has just ran a marathon, it seems. They have, and this is a really tough mountain for us. We go to climb out of being down 9-3, heading into the final 15 minutes of play here at Laker Turf. But this is the best team in the Suniac so far that the Lakers have played. So this sort of test right here, and with the emotions behind the game, being that it's senior day, being that this could possibly be the last time these guys play here at Laker Turf Stadium in front of their home crowd and being that they're going up against their former coach and Drew Bezek, maybe the motions are getting to them a little bit but if they really want to get back into this one what is it going to start with here is it going to be Elston you need to start it with him or do you want to try and get other people involved right now I think you just got to shoot the ball I mean really we haven't seen that many good shots off besides really Broadman's had five Elston has also had five, three of them on net. But after that, it's pretty few and far in between. Corey O'Connor, three, one of them on net. Jack Delaney, three, two of them on net. Trey Jones, two and one. Tyler Stevenson, one and one. Liam Sexton, one and one. You haven't really seen a lot of other guys shoot the ball. And right now, it's it's been a struggle. Jason Donglewick, we saw that one opportunity he had. He let it go. It just couldn't get through the lanes. And was able to nick a defender out in front. Pav had an answer for it, just be able to scoop it right up, send it the other way. And it really starts off, I think, you got to take a look at Elston at this point. I mean, he's got all three of your goals today, and it seems like any time he has had the ball, they've had a really good chance. It's either found the back of the net or Pav has had a stop for it. They've pretty much had a stop for everything that Oswego has been throwing at them here as the refs discuss something on the field now. And at the end of that third quarter, an interesting strategy from Coach Drew Bezek to hold the ball instead of trying to take any sort of shot there. They'd opt to not risk a turnover or anything like that. And instead opt to just take the penalty further into the fourth quarter here. There's an unnecessary roughness call on Tyler Stevenson, so he'll be in there for at least a minute, a little bit less now that we're going into the fourth quarter. Marcelo Jr. is going to start with it at the top of the box. And they're going to reset the shot clock here. Just wait in on that. It's the final 15 minutes of play here at Laker Turf Stadium is officially underway.
Geneseo now. They're going to find Marcelo Jr. Marcelo Jr. dumps it off. Closed in quickly there. Cameron Yost loses his stick. Find Marcelo Jr. Over to Gerlach. Gerlach dumps it off. Has someone in the middle there. Couldn't quite get it over to him. Back over to Gerlach. Fakes a shot and just dumps it right off. We're going to be even strength here pretty soon. They want to try and get a good look off. They're just going to take a shot. And it's going to go right above the stick. Top cheddar above Aiden Kenyon. As Geneseo now brings their scoring total to double digits. It's a 10-3 ball game. 14-15 left here in the fourth quarter. Now Sullivan, two goals on the day for him. His seventh shot, his fifth on goal. And it just really, we say it again and again, just costly penalties are coming to haunt the Lakers right now. And ironically enough, it's against Geneseo. It seems like the same boat as it was with the hockey team over the last few years. Just costly penalties. And just a swing of momentum has just not been in their favor. <laughs> Overall, though, the one thing that I did notice on that man-up possession is how fast Jancio is moving the ball. And it's really, really fast. They've been just constantly moving, trying to get a passing lane. It's almost every time they get a pass, one second, two second, right off their stick. It's hard to keep up with, and it's way harder to keep up with being down a man like they were on that last possession there. Jancio turns on the flames a little bit. They're going to find an open man. Almost an identical shot to their last goal a few seconds ago. That was Robert Benilo looking for his hat trick on the day. And Oswego was closest to the ball going out of bounds, so they'll get possession here. 13 minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. Couldn't quite get the pass to connect there. Evan Coleman ends up with the ball as he'll look to clear it. They're going to find Scordo. Scordo loses it. Can't quite find it quickly. Sexton's going to scoop it up. And what they're going to find a goal. Oswego bench. Getting hyped for that one. And an unbelievable turn of events for Oswego there. It didn't look like anything was going in their favor. And Chris Schmidt gets his first goal of the ball game with an assist from Leon Sexton. That all starts off with a play by Scordo, though, able to corral it in a way, just simply glide it back into play, closer towards goal, scooped up by Sexton, being able to find the stick of Chris Schmidt, wiring it five hole on Pav, a point blank shot, a great start by Oswego State on the transition, and overall, smart play by Scordo, keeping the ball in play, just simply gliding it towards center, getting a passing lane there by Sexton, and getting things a little chippy now, and Oswego will once again go on the man disadvantage, and things clearly getting chippy here in the fourth quarter. No doubt about that, and we'll see Looks what like they Prescott's. call exactly here. It will be on Prescott, so they'll lose their faceoff guy for just a little bit here. I just want to go back to that Chris Schmidt goal because at the look of things, that's Chris Schmidt's first goal of the season. It's Geneseo. Take your goal score by number 21, Chris Schmidt. We'll take possession now. They're going to be man up with a good opportunity to score here. Finds an open man. Back over to Benilo. From and a nice in-between pass there. That's going to be Jimmy Atkinson on there with another goal. A brilliant pass there by Reese Gerlach. And Reese Gerlach has been the unsung hero of this game. Just being able to find those impossible-to-find passing lanes and get the ball to where it needs to go. Just a quick response and a nice cross-field pass just right to Atkinson easy solution for Geneseo just being able to get get across get some movement get a lane open and that's exactly what they do getting it right past Kenyon and another response to Oswego's goals by Geneseo. Great face off win there from Logan Prescott as he comes out of the penalty box. 
Tennessee. Corey O'Connor with the ball now. And if Oswego has any chance in this ball game, they're going to need to score and score quickly here. Just over 12 minutes left in the ball game as Oswego's undefeated record and the Suniac is in jeopardy. Rodman now starts at the top. He's going to pass it off, dump it off. Couldn't quite get over to Don Lewick. Ends up in Broadman's stick regardless. Gavin Elson with a swim dodge. Goes back over right, lays the shoulder down. He's got room. A bounce shot there, a little bit too high. If he got that lower, it probably would have been a goal, but it's going to stay with Oswego nonetheless. It was a good play by Elson. He had some room to work. He was able to peel by his defender, get one last step around, and he was able to get a good shot. It looked like from here it went off the turf and off the crossbar and out, but I could be mistaken, but either way, a good opportunity for the Lakers on the offensive possession. Yeah, good spacing by them, too, to clear out for him to even get that shot off. So we go. Looks to turn up the heat a little bit. Sexton over to Don Lewick. Don Lewick looks to make his move. He's going to go left. He's going to look to shoot. And then right off the stick of Pav, who's been a brick wall. Good. He's going to stick Stay. with Oswego here. They're saying last touch off Geneseo. Didn't quite see that one, but going to stick with the Lakers here. Rodman looks to take a shot. It's going to go off the helmet of Michael Corwin. Unlucky possession there. Unlucky shot for Rodman. 44 seconds left on the possession clock. Corey O'Connor now spins around. Finds Sexton in the backfield. Stutter step. He goes right. Tries to get around his defender. He's just going to pass it off. It's Gavin Elston. Elston now. He drives in. He's going to lose the ball Good on the shot. Have. And a turnover there for the Lakers. Geneseo. Nice pass off. He's going to dump it off behind the back over to Marcelo Jr. I believe that was Brady Sullivan with that. Shifty, swifty. Very crafty. Move. Crafty, that's the word. Shifty, swifty, I said. Geneseo looks to put this one out of reach. Turf Monster gets Sullivan a little bit there. He slips up, sticks with the ball. Over to Benilo now. Benilo over to Frank. Frank passes it off. It's McComsky and McComsky over to Marcelo Jr. It's Connor Aspinall. Takes him on. A little ISO play here. Marcelo Jr. takes a shot. Going to be kicked up by Aiden Kenyon. That was a dangerous one. Almost went off into the goal off the ricochet. As we go clears now. Good play there by Oswego to regroup things. Coleman bringing it to the far side, then swinging it right back around to the near side, allowing some space to open up for the Lakers. And a brilliant defensive effort there by Matt Coleman, the LSM. And Jenny takes a shot right off the stick of Kenyon. Great presence there in the goal. As Jenny ends up with the ball now. It was Matt Coleman who got it back and passes it over to his teammate. Ends up with Marcelo Jr. now. He's just going to roll it over to Robert Benilo. And with 8.40 left on the clock here in the fourth quarter, being up by seven, what's your strategy here if you're Genesee? Are you looking to really score anymore, or are you looking to try and take some time off the clock? Right now I feel like it's take your opportunities as they leave them for you. If Oswego is giving you an opportunity to let one fly, don't hesitate. Your shots have been finding the back of the net quite often today, and if not, you're continuing a possession that will eat that clock away. So in reality, it's a win-win for Jacio. I mean, Oswego now taking another penalty as they'll go on, really, Jacio will go on the man advantage. So right now it's just killing that clock away, and if not, find a goal. And if Either way, you're right now you're up seven. 
Oswegos can have to pretty much average a goal per minute to get this thing back all square. It's going to be on Cameron Yosh there. He hit the helmet of his attackman. Unfortunate there for him. He was just trying to defend. And it's hard for the deep holes sometimes, Turge, because you try so hard to stick on your man. And sometimes you lose control of that stick and it hits the helmet of your opponent. And there you go, 30 seconds into the penalty box you go. With 8.06 left on the clock, being down seven, it's not great for them right here. Marcelo Jr. now, he's going to pass it over to Benilo. Now to Gerlach. Nice cross field pass, tic tac toe. A lot of space, but a good save there by Kenyon. Kenyon, a stud in goal, he ends up with the ball. And Got almost, deflected. almost a self goal right there. You know, in my time of playing lacrosse, when I was a goalie, I uh, I let in a self goal of my own, so wow. it's not a not a great feeling at all. Glad that didn't that one didn't happen there. Geneseo looks to take charge. Seven minutes, fifteen seconds left in regulation. Geneseo, at this point, can look to slow things down a little bit. Like you said, take their opportunities when they come. We're going to go even strength here. And a nice bounce shot right there. That was Benilo. Ends up outside of the goal. And just suffocating defense by the Knights. Lakers can't do much about it. And Aspinall ends up with the ball. A double spin there. And no slash is called. Good evasion there. Aspinall getting beat up between four defenders there. Referees with the no call and the crowd getting a little bit frustrated with that one. And Geneseo now. Ends up with a shot. That's Marcelo Jr. Saved by Aiden Kenyon. Aiden Kenyon with his 14th of the ball game. Excuse me, that'll be his 15th of the ball game. And they're going to look for another opportunity now. And it is Brady Sullivan once again. Number 11 for the 12th goal of the ball game. And they're saying bye-bye to this crowd right now here on Senior Day. Five minutes, 57 seconds left on the clock. Geneseo putting this one out of reach. They are, and you talk about on senior day, and it's the seniors getting it done for the Knights. Mark Pav in between the pipes being lights out, really keeping this Oswego offense relatively quiet. We talk about individuals, Brady Sullivan tallying a few today. And then furthermore, you have Christian Marcello Jr. getting some goals. William Comiskey also getting some goals for the Knights. And, Right now, it's the seniors on the away side of things that are celebrating today. BB Syrup with another win right there. As Geneseo brings some unfamiliar faces to this, into this offense, or at least ones we haven't called out yet today. Riley Henselder with the ball now. He's going to pass it over to X. They're going to find a wide open man. Fake high, shoot low. Textbook goal there for Ryan Trebig, the freshman. Makes it a 13-4 ball game. And Oswego, not much to speak of here in the fourth quarter. And relatively silent now. Jazzio, like you mentioned, Luke, making a lot of substitutions now. Feeling rather complacent with where the team's at. You're up nine with five minutes to go. I mean, it's pretty straightforward right now. And Oswego, this game is really out of reach for them. And they're going to have to turn around fast. We'll talk about around the Suniak in a bit. But Cortland getting the job done today with a win. And Oswego, most likely a loss today, will put them equal in the standings. Which makes Wednesday's game just so huge for the Lakers. And... Both these teams will likely be sitting at 4-1 and one going into Wednesday unless Oswego decides to really put this Geneseo defense on rookie mode. 
and be able to tally together nine goals in a span of five minutes, which seems everything but likely. And goals are just raining for this Geneseo team now, and they're coming in bunches. That's number 23, Luca Chitino, the freshman midfielder, 14-4 ball game. And with Geneseo up 10, putting it out of reach, I want to say the dagger. I don't know if it's that just quite yet. It might be. But 446 left on the clock. A very, very tall hill to climb for us. We go to come back in this one as we have some face-off substitutions. It's going to be Austin Schro to the freshman for us. We go and for Geneseo. I believe that's Nick Reffel, the sophomore. Excuse me, that's going to be Kate Spencer. Us we go wins this one. Liam McClary now with the ball. As Oswego looks to build some momentum for their Wednesday matchup. The thing with Geneseo, though, they got three goals recently in a span of a minute. You have one at 557, one at 526, and then you have the most recent one at 455. So this offense, Luke, like you mentioned, just absolutely firing. And we see a substitution on the goalie side of things as well. They're able to switch things out a little bit. They're feeling rather complacent with everything as Pav takes a seat. Now goaltender Wes Ralph coming in, the sophomore for Geneseo, and getting a little bit of practice time for the sophomore netminder. And Pav gets to take a little bit of a break. He played very well today. He earned the, earned the relaxation and get some time off, which is really not needed for the goaltender. Absolutely. And what a way to start off your first few minutes in this game as Ralph has a save just his first shot on goal. Oswego now. It's Hayden Coney, the freshman. He spins around. 65 seconds left on the possession clock. 3 minutes, 20 seconds left in this ball game. Laker Turf Stadium. Luke Rosenthal alongside Thomas Turgeon here on Senior Day. Oswego now. They're going to find... An open man as Liam McClary spins around his defender. The shot goes wide left. Liam Sexton there. On the outside marker to retain possession for us, we go. Sexton. Able to shed two defenders right there, but not a very accurate shot on goal. 37 seconds left they'll have in this possession to score. Couldn't really get enough power on that one. The shot by Sexton just kind of dribbling wide. Ooh. I wonder if that was a goal or not. It looked like it picked that corner, and it did. They are going to say that's a goal. Now, Oswego, with their fifth of the game, I couldn't tell if that went on the outside or inside of the net there, but Wes Ralph lets one go behind him. Jack Delaney, the attackman midfielder hybrid with a goal of his own. Looks like he's limping off the field a little bit, though. Might tweak something. A little lower shaking up. A little lower body, potentially. Uh, but either way, a good shot there. Ricochets off the turf and in that top left corner. And quick bounce out. Good thing the officials were able to keep track of it. A little bit of a positive going into the end of this game. Jack Delaney getting a goal, getting on the board on senior day. But right now, you're down by nine. It's really a punch in the gut for this Lakers team going into this game undefeated 4-0, but we saw this coming at the beginning of the year. Geneseo's team starting off very good, Cortland being very good, and Oswego really playing not the top teams in the SUNYAC until the end of the season. They get Geneseo and Cortland in a matter of less than a week, and you kind of saw this coming a little bit, and you have a yeah, really tough test in front of you today. And it's definitely a stepping stone going into Wednesday. No doubt about that as Oswego really the past few seasons not being able to get it done on Senior Day. Haven't won a Senior Day game since 2019. That was a 15-6 win over Oneonta. Four years without a Senior Day win. Tough measure for this program that's looking to get back into the SUNYAC playoffs here. Evan Coleman looks to take the ball upfield. He's going to cross field pass over Cameron Yost. 
Yosh tries to find an open man. It's going to go over the head of Bryce Wallman, the sophomore. And Geneseo now. The thing okay. is, what could be likely, though, with that matchup against Cortland on Wednesday, that could very well be a playoff preview. And Cortland right now will be at 4-1. and one. Oswego will also be in 4-1. and one. Oneonta played Cortland today, so a loss there on that end. It's a, They'll be seeing it 3-2. and two. So you look at this game, if Oswego plays Cortland, they lose to them. Oswego will very likely go back on the road to Cortland once more to face off against the Dragons in the semifinal. So you're going to get almost a two-way sweep of the Dragons in less than a week, so you're definitely going to have a lot of preparation and a lot of notes to take away if you're getting more than one crack at them. For sure, because Oswego, although they're not going to be able to win this one against Geneseo, it will be bittersweet, but they are in really, really good shape to make a Suniac playoff push as they will end the day with a 4-1 and one record. Like you said, Corlin likely to go 4-1 and one as well into that Wednesday matchup. Oneonta sitting at 3-1 and one right now, and then the rest of the teams, Brockport, New Paltz, Plattsburgh and Potsdam, one or less wins for all four of those teams. So it's likely that Oswego will end up in the playoffs regardless of the outcome of these next few games. But still, you don't want to be backing up going into the playoffs as Geneseo with the icing on the cake. It's going to be Kenny Hannaford, the senior, on senior day for Oswego with his first goal of the game getting some PT in this one 31.8 seconds left in regulation yeah just overall Jess you know, getting the job done Luke like you mentioned the icing on the cake a couple shoves out in front of the goal after that celebration there and he Jesseo has the right to celebrate they, they've played very well today they have set a statement going into the final week of the Suniac and will very likely be that number one seed going into the playoffs. They already took care of Cortland. So unless some drastic upset in the final week of play of regular season play, they'll enter the playoffs as the number one seed and a great start for Drew Bezak in his second year of the program. Corey O'Connor now. Don't know if Oswego is going to take another shot here. And they might look for one. We're going to pass it right off. Wes Ralph ends his day with a nice save. Ball goes out of bounds, but that is going to be your ball game here at Laker Turf Stadium. The streak for Oswego and the Suniac is over. They end today's game going 4-1 in the Suniac now, dropping to 4-1. Geneseo improves to 5-0 in the Suniac, taking charge and taking the very pivotal lead in Suniac play, 15-5 win for Geneseo here on Senior Day at Laker Turf Stadium. And this was a hard, tough fought matchup for both of these squads here. Oswego couldn't get it done in the end offensively. Just give me some of your final wrap-up thoughts before we head into some of our post-game talk here. What did you think about this game so far? Well, it was definitely a tale of many teams even though two were on the field today, you saw an Oswego team in the first quarter playing Geneseo really tight, very, like you mentioned, a stalemate first quarter. Second quarter, Geneseo's floodgates opened up, ridiculous. Just It looked like about three feet of rain came down and the floodgates were open for the Geneseo offense in that second quarter. Third quarter, a little bit of that same story. Oswego trying to claw back, but it seemed like any time Oswego had any sense of faith or opportunities to get. They did find the back of that a few times, but every time that seemed to happen, Geneseo would have one, two, three, maybe four responses for them, whether that be a goal, whether that be a possession. Either way, Oswego just couldn't get the offense they wanted today. I feel like they probably could have shot the ball a little bit more, but credit to Geneseo's defense. They covered up the passing lanes, covered up the shooting lanes even more, but Either way, that's that's really how that game won. You look at Brady Sullivan, three goals. Gavin Elston also with three goals today. But it's been it was the seniors on Geneseo's side definitely getting it done for the Knights. As 
the Lakers, I mean, they just really couldn't find the back of the net. It shows on the scoreboard. A lot of seniors getting it done. So we take a look around the Suniac right now and some of the implications that this has on the Suniac playoffs coming up in just a few weeks now. We look at some of these games as I pull them up right here. And there's some, some really good games here today. Not just Geneseo versus Oswego. It's also Plattsburgh at Brockport as they take a 12-7 leave over the Cardinals. Potsdam at New Paltz is in the fourth quarter as well. New Paltz leading 13-10 there. And the battle between the Red Dragons, Cortland on the road at Oneonta leading 17-8. Like we had mentioned, Geneseo with a pivotal Suniac win of their own here at Laker Turf Stadium. Spoiling senior day for the seniors here at Oswego and a lot of their fans and family members here in the crowd as well. Oswego just not able to get it done here today. As we look at some of the playoffs here and the playoff implications, Oswego going to stick tied in second here with Cortland, is Cortland likely to win? They, are, they already have won that game, so they're going to be 4-1, and one, both of those guys. And Geneseo sticking in first place. They are undefeated in the Suniac, really the top dogs in this conference here. They are the team to beat. They've beaten everybody so far here in this season. But yeah, and you talk about, Luke, the standings itself – right now that we talked about that that Wednesday game right now it's everything I mean it looks very likely the Lakers are back in the playoffs but on the other hand it's looking like that's who you're going to face off in that second round it, or in that first round it looks like it will be Cortland if Oswego does make the playoffs if they afford two more losses it doesn't seem likely that they lose to Potsdam staying at 0-4 but anything can happen we've seen crazier things but that's going to be your Suniac semifinal preview, very likely to be. We look at some of the next matchups for Oswego now. And like you said, against Cortland on Wednesday, this is a team that they have never beat in program history. How does Oswego get it done against a team that they've never beat? Well, you definitely have to take away the positives from this game. That first quarter was probably one of the best defensive showings that they have had all year long. They contained this Geneseo offense, and they needed to do that if they wanted to remain close in this contest. It was a very tight game at the beginning. But on the other hand, you definitely need to look on the defensive end. And it was a struggle for the Lakers. They had a lot of blown coverage in that second quarter, in that fourth quarter, even sure when the game was out of hand. But it's definitely going to start off in, in the film room, getting, getting that film against Cortland, getting that film here against Geneseo and seeing what went wrong and how you're going to be able to turn it around because you only have a few days to do it. It'll start off on Monday with practice, and then you got Tuesday as well before you travel down to Cortland Wednesday afternoon for a date with the Dragons. Yeah, you talk about this today against Geneseo being a tough hill to climb. That might be an even tougher hill to climb against Cortland on Wednesday, but I do just want to highlight some of the seniors here on Senior Day once again. Aiden Kenyon, the guy in between the pipes there, had a very good outing today despite giving up 15 goals. It really wasn't all on him at times, just an abundance of shots coming his way. Gavin Elston, who had a hat trick today. Evan Coleman, the deep hole, who played very good defense. Jack Delaney, Cameron Yost, Brendan Hames, and Tyler Scordo all being celebrated here on senior day at Laker Turf Stadium. Once again, 15-5 loss for the Lakers. And as for our WTOP seniors, once again, Thomas Turgeon, my partner here today, myself, Luke Rosenthal, Marcus Lopez, Justin Clint, Brian Zaccone, and Merrick Patowski, everybody who worked on the broadcast here today. I want to thank all of you guys and good luck in all of your future endeavors as our time here at WTOP 10 and the late Oswego Lakers broadcast comes to an end. And not so we think. So we think because it, it we could may. be very likely. Although, as we talk about a little bit on the next broadcast, potentially the women's lacrosse team. It's very likely that they will host a Suniac playoff game. They have already clinched the playoffs, and they have a two. They have a two game ahead, so they are very likely to host a playoff game in the near future. Very likely to host a playoff game, and that's going to be their first in a while. So they're hoping to get that one. But for today. That's going to do it here at Laker Turf. Your final score for today's matchup, Geneseo 15, your Oswego Lakers 
five. Tune into our next broadcast, possibly in a few weeks here at Laker Turf, as the Oswego women's lacrosse team may or may not be hosting a playoff game, are in good position for that one. Alongside Thomas Turge, my name is Luke Rosenthal. Signing off. Have a great night.
Thank you. 